Hey guys, welcome back. So it's day one of building an off-grid system big enough to actually take our whole house off the mains. And that means that all of that has to go up there. That's about three kilowatts worth of solar and a roof mounting system. But before I go ahead and start up there, let's talk about what we're using and uh, where we got it from so that you guys can get some great deals too. So if you've been following us for a while, you'll know we already have a little off-grid system up and running with a three kilowatt inverter and uh, 16 solar panels, which has run all our critical loads for a while. But for this next stage of the build, we had to up our game quite a bit. What we're using is 20 170 watt solar panels. We've got 35 meters of aluminum roof rails, bags and bags of panel clips, and two great big boxes of universal brackets. The mounting system we bought from solarhub.ie, they're a solar supply company based in Cherry Orchard in Dublin. They had the best prices around, excuse me. For example, these universal adjustable brackets. From every other company we could see, these were retailing about 14, maybe 15 quid each. With Solarhub, they were 650 each. Next thing is the panel clips. Mid panel clips like this, or perhaps the end panel clips like these ones. If you go on Amazon or eBay or any of those places like that, you'll find these retailing for about four to six, maybe seven quid each. With solarhub.ie, they're 150 each. Quite a difference and no loss of quality. Now moving on to the aluminium rails. Me being a cheap ass that I am, I looked at just standard aluminium box section, just the length of box section aluminium, working out about 15, 20 quid per length. To get the proper rails like these that have the two slots, in them. One slot is for the bracket to lock into to mount the rail on and the other slot is for your clips to fit into and they just clip in just like that. So it all locks together in a nice easy fit system. Those rails were 14 euros each. For everything that you see here not including the panels from Solar Hub was about 750 quid compared to another company we got a quote off of, which was heading up over three grand. So the panels we're using are 170 watt eco-worthy monocrystalline panels. They cost 140 quid. And if you want to go to arclekennyhomestead.com, we have an affiliate link there. You can buy them from the same supplier as us. And if you even want to throw in an extra 15 quid, you can get the bifacial version of these. So for 155 quid, bifacial panels, pretty good price. It's very important to note as well, the monocrystalline versus polycrystalline. Polycrystalline are the older type panels. They are more black. They look like the calculator, uh, your solar powered calculator from way back in the eighties. Polycrystalline is an older technology. Monocrystalline is quite old now. That's the bluish and you can see the cells. Um, and bifacial now is kind of uh, spreading around everywhere. So just be aware if you're buying panels, don't buy the ones that are all black. That's the old technology and uh, you have to be aware of that. So when you're doing a roof mount, the first thing you need to know is what type of roof you've got. In our case, it's an interlocking cement tile roof, which is probably the most common here in Ireland. That means that every tile is overlapped on either side and at the top by its neighbors, and they all fit snugly together to make a nice sealed roof. When you're working on these, you're gonna need a couple of things. First of all, a good pair of heavy duty tear resistant gloves, because those tiles, they're pretty sharp and they'll eat through a lot of stuff. And second of all, something like this, which is a plastering trowel. We just take our little trowel, shimmy it underneath, give it a wiggle so you can get your hand in there. What you want to do then is support the tile beside it with one hand and push upwards with the other. It's going to take a little bit of force, but they will move up a certain amount. Uh, there's my rafter right there. That's probably the worst part of this job, is hunting for the rafters, because you'll have to move more tiles than you want to move. Now, once your tile's out of the way, and you've got your rafter, which is under here, next you bring in your brackets, right? Now, ideally, the bracket should sit that way, with the adjustment pointing inwards. But because the gap here between the rafter and the tile is too large, we have to sit this one this way. It's fully adjustable, so it's, it's kind of okay. But the most important thing here to remember is when you're fitting this, make sure you don't lock it up, press down against the tile like that. Because once there's weight on that, it could crack the tile. You want to leave a small amount of clearance, maybe just like a couple of mil, 
to allow that bracket to sit up and not be putting pressure on the tiles. Next thing you want to do, slide your tile back down, all right, so that you can make a little mark on your tile for a cut line. The reason for this is that the tiles have to sit flush the way they were originally with that bracket still in place. So we have to make a cutout in the tile for that bracket to now sit into. Let's go straight along. So now I know where to cut to fit the bracket. Now if you've done it right, it should look like that. That bracket can move a little without hitting the tiles, so you're not, you haven't got an interference fit there, risking cracking your tiles. And you got a nice snug fit, everything sitting back down the way it should, keeping your roof sealed. So that's how you fit a roof bracket on this type of roof. It's a little bit more intensive than, say, a ground mount, and God knows, give me a ground mounted system any day of the week, it's so much easier. But this isn't actually that bad, I mean, anyone can do this without having to pick up a phone and call in a company. Once you just make sure you do it right, it's not a big deal. All right, so that's most of the roof brackets now in place and I've got a few rails fitted. With hindsight, I'm glad I didn't follow my DIY idea of just buying some box section aluminium. I'd be up here for hours drilling extra holes and bolts and getting it all to fit. For the same price as the standard box section, you can buy the proper rails with the channels in them and they just loop onto the brackets, nice and easy, no drilling required. Line them up with your other rails and tighten in the fitting. Fitting the panels onto the rails is super easy, using the quick clips here. You'll have two clips that are holding your first panel in place, so that's secure. And the next two clips here are just slightly loose. I'm using one clip on the lower rail here because we do the top rail first, and that way the panel has something to stop against so it doesn't slide off. So once you've got your panel lined up, take your quick clip, it just slots into the gap, once the panel is lined up with its neighbours and everything is nice and flush fitting, we can then tighten down the next two inner clips. And we'll leave these two loose for the next panel to go beside. Got it. Yep. So we're just connecting these together in one big string basically. So it's positive to negative, connecting each panel into the one before it. That should give us about three and a half kilowatts just from these 20 panels. Um, and we're kind of pushing the limit then of what the inverter can handle as well. So until we get the bigger inverter, we're only able to use either this string here or the one that's down on the ground. Finally then, when you come to the end of each row, you're going to use the end clips instead of the middle clips. Almost identical, just the end clips are single sided and have the tab that comes down to lock against the rail. Because we've connected all 20 of these up in a string, the negative from this one has connected to the positive of this one. So it's just one big circuit basically. Depending on your um, MPPT controller, you might want to set these up as two individual strings, in which case you'll have to run either a positive or a negative wire, depending on how you connect it, all the way from the end of the row down to your first connection at the start of the row. Just something to bear in mind when you're setting these things up, plan it out ahead of time. But that's all 20 panels fitted now. Fit the end clip, simply slide it up tight, rattle it down. Don't go too mad with them. Um, you just want to have a nice tight fit because uh, glass doesn't do well with pressure points, especially during temperature changes. This bit's probably the easiest of the whole job, connecting the wire for those new panels into the inverter. These are completely user friendly and designed to be operated on by the owner. Now obviously we're not going to go tearing apart the insides of it, but when it comes to connections they are designed to be done by you. And it's pretty simple, it's just plus and minus on the DC side, and then you'll have uh, live and neutral on the AC side. Basic safety precautions, make sure all your lines are dead and shut down before you go working on them. With DC current being a lot safer than AC, at these high voltages you can still get a bit of a dart off them. So I haven't connected this to the panels up above yet. I'm going to connect it into the inverter first, which is completely powered down and shut off. 
Positive and negative, just slide into the two DC terminals here. Make sure you use insulated tools, as at some stage of this you will have to connect a circuit that is live, and you want to be nice and safe doing that. That's all there is to it. Get your wires into the connector nice and clean, tighten down the terminals. That's it, job done. So this next bit here is where we're going off the script a little bit. Instead of using the standard wiring that would come with these if you were to buy a whole kit where it's plug and play and you just have to plug them in together, I'm using much much bigger wiring. What I'm using is 10mm squared um, that's intended for use in AC circuits instead of what comes with them which is 4mm squared, less than half the size. The reason why I'm doing this is because in the future we're going to be adding more to this. And I don't want to have to reroute the wiring under the roof and all the way back out again. So I'm putting the biggest wiring possible in place from the get-go. That way I'll never have to disturb it again. All I'll have to do is connect into it in whatever way we need to in the future. To do that, I'm simply going to snip off these two connectors, strip that to bare wire one at a time so that there's no risk of them touching or me touching both at the same time and getting a dart off them. The only problem with doing things this way is the use of these connector blocks. They require replacement probably once a year, yeah, pretty much once a year, because they will start to corrode just from the dampness in the air, things like that. The box itself will be all sealed up, but I've seen that even in the sealed box, they still tend to get a little bit of corrosion on them. So in a year's time, I'll have to replace that connector, but other than that, we're good to go. With using this upgraded wire, the twin and earth wire, it's intended for use in AC circuits, which means its color coding is different. Here in Ireland, that means that brown is live and blue is neutral, and you'll have an earth there. That's why it's called twin and earth. So what I like to do in this case is stick with the, the designation. So the positive goes to the brown, and the negative goes to the blue, which is the neutral. And again, make sure that you're using insulated tools for this bit. And now we can go and see what it's putting out. Okay, PV input, one and a half kilowatts, 1.49. And we can go more than that, I'm convinced. 65% output, what are we at? We're at 1.9. Okay, so it's taken 175 watts from the batteries and it's taken one and a half kilowatts from solar, the new array. Happy days, that's not bad. Not bad at all. So that's a definite improvement. We can take more from the panels and drain less from the batteries. That for us is one of the key reasons why we're going off grid as opposed to grid tied. During the day, you make most of your power. If you're grid tied, you're exporting that back to the energy company. When you come home that evening, you're re-importing it back to the site plus a handler's fee. For us, that seems kind of silly when you can store it on site as much as possible, given the cost of batteries, obviously. And that kind of brings me on to my next point, which is energy storage. We're after getting a hold of a couple of more batteries, and I think maybe we could add them in and see how we do. It'll be another month before we can get our new inverter to bring things up to 48 volts and uh, the kilowatt target that we're aiming for. But for the moment, we can start adding stuff in, make sure it's all working right before the new equipment arrives. Let's give it a go. So you guys probably know this already, but when it comes to batteries, you've got a couple of different options. Lithium ions and pylon techs being the best performers on the market at the moment. The cost, unfortunately, puts them out of reach for most people, ourselves included. That's why we use lead acid. They don't perform as well, but they're less than half the price. They're a great way to get started with your self-sufficiency, reduce your dependence on the grid, and with what you save, you can put, a, put it aside and upgrade your system later on down the line. That's the way we do it anyway. Bend at the knee. Oh, but bloody hell, there's a bit of weight in them. That must be about 40 kilos. Oh, yeah. All right. Ah. That's not going to work, is it? Hey, Chloe, you got a sec? What's up? Can you come here for a sec? They're not gonna fit in there, are they? No. No, 
not gonna fit. We're gonna need new shit, aren't we? I guess that's that then, isn't it? So folks, it looks like we can go no further for the minute. If you want to get your hands on any of the equipment that we use, you can go to our website, arkelkennyhomestead.com. We have a couple of affiliate links there that will help you get all the bits while supporting us here at the channel at the same time. With that said, the best way to support us is to simply hit that like button, share our vids on your social media, and that really helps us to keep making those videos, sharing all these tips and tricks that we learn with you guys. So until then, do take care of yourselves, Bye. and we'll see you in the next one.